Yo, what's going on, A Push Peeps? We have Key Concept 5.3, the final video for Period 5, which encompasses 1844 to 1877 for you today. Before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to Sharon Fitwee for watching and helping me spread the word about my videos. I think her teacher should give her 100. That is my thought. If you were my student, I would give you 100 for doing this. So thank you, Sharon, and thank you, everybody who watches my videos and helps spread the word. It means so much that you are supporting me. All right, let's take a look at Key Concept 5.3. It says the Union victory in the Civil War and the contested reconstruction of the South settled the issue of slavery and secession, but left unresolved many questions about the power of the federal government and citizenship rights. So let's look at some big ideas. One, why did the North ultimately prevail in the Civil War? Two, how did Reconstruction affect the relationship between Congress and the presidency? And three, what impacts did the 14th and 15th Amendments have on women and African Americans? You will be able to answer these questions and more by the time you're done with this video. All right, let's look at Roman numeral one. The North's greater manpower and industrial resources, its leadership, and the decision for emancipation eventually led to the Union military victory over the Confederacy in the devastating Civil War. So both the North and the South dedicated their economies and societies to fighting this war. There was conscription or a draft instituted in both the North and the South. And even though they both the North and the South dedicated their economies, there was some opposition in both areas. In the North, Maryland newspapers were shut down by Lincoln that were critical of the war effort. And we also saw the New York City draft riots. And this helped lead many to call the Civil War a rich man's war, but a poor man's fight. And these draft riots were over the draft and over conflicts between Irish and blacks. In the South, you would see many farmers refusing to fight, and they would not let their slaves fight in the war as well. So let's talk about the impacts of the Emancipation Proclamation. Absolutely positively have to know that. And here is a painting of the reading of the Emancipation Proclamation. The purpose of the war was changed. In the beginning of the war, Lincoln said he was fighting to preserve the Union. Now, it gave a moral cause to the war. Many African Americans began to enlist in the Union Army as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation. And one of the most important impacts was it kept European powers from siding with the South. There are many European countries, particularly England, that were thinking about recognizing the South as its own country. And they could not after this because they were so anti-slavery. Okay, why did the Union prevail despite early challenges? And early on, the, the Union, the North, was having a really hard time. Well, eventually they settled on improved military leadership under the leadership of people like Grant and Sherman and this idea of total war. And there is Sherman who instituted this. They had effective strategies, the Anaconda Plan, which was a blockade of the South, all the way west of the Mississippi River and throughout the Atlantic Ocean. Key victories, including the Battle of Antietam, which led to the Emancipation Proclamation, and the North had greater resources. They were very industrialized. They had most of the factories. They had most of the railroads, and they had most of the manpower. And the South's environment and infrastructure was destroyed during the Civil War, especially during Sherman's march to the sea. And he, he and his military focused on destroying the railroads of the South. Okay, Keith, Concept 5.3, Roman numeral 2, Roman numeral 2 stated that the Civil War and Reconstruction altered power relationships between the states and the federal government and among the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Ending slavery and the notion of a divisible union, but leaving unresolved questions of relative power and largely unchanged social and economic patterns. So the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. But the South was able to resist this amendment via something called sharecropping. And this was the idea that former slaves would work on farms and they would exchange their labor for using land and houses. So in, a, in essence, they would rent land from, from former plantation owners. Half of their crops were typically given to the landowner as a form of payment. Now, sharecroppers had to borrow money to get started. In their first year, most of these sharecroppers had little money. So they would go to a store. And they would take out loans at very high rates. This was called the crop lien system. And often you would see interest rates as high as 50 to 60 percent. Now, if cotton prices fell, and they did in the 1870s, this would help lead to perpetual debt for most sharecroppers, which would then lead to peonage, which meant that they had to, they were forced to work to pay off their debt. 
a majority of blacks in the South were sharecroppers by 1890. So even though slavery was outlawed, many blacks were forced to work as sharecroppers under conditions not too far from slavery. Now, the goal of sharecropping was to have circumstances as close to pre-Civil War as possible. That's why the South instituted this idea of sharecropping. Okay, so what were the effects of the Republicans to reconstruct the South? Well, it helped change. There was a change in the balance of power between the presidency and Congress. We have this idea of presidential versus radical reconstruction. And Congress ultimately determined when to readmit states because they determined the rules for Congress. And Johnson would veto virtually every radical Republican bill. And then the radical Republicans would override those vetoes. And we see Thaddeus Stevens of the House here on the left versus President Andrew Johnson on the right. Andrew Johnson was impeached, which means that charges brought against him. It does not mean that he was removed, and ultimately he was not removed. It fell one vote shy. Now, when we're talking about reuniting the Union, one of the other effects of the Republicans on Reconstruction was that they reunited the Union. They brought the South back into the Union. Now, there were political and leadership opportunities for former slaves. You see Robert Smalls, this steamer pilot that brought a union ship to the Union Navy during the Civil War. He was a war hero. He later became a congressman. And this also helped rearrange the relationships between whites and blacks in the South, albeit temporarily. Now, blacks were now free. They had rights of their own. And you even saw, to continue with this idea of Congress, Hiram Rebels was a senator from Mississippi, the first African-American to serve in the Senate, who did so in Jefferson Davis's former seat. So that really helped change the relationship between blacks and whites. Okay, why did radical Republicans not succeed in changing racial attitudes, culture, and establishing a base for their party? There was very heavy determined Southern resistance in the establishment of something called Redeemer Governments. And these were local and state governments that ousted Republican governments. And they often did this through violence and intimidation. You have the KKK, which with its founder, Nathan Forrest, that would terrorize blacks and Republicans. And the North also had a waning resolve. That's very important to know this term, waning, which means to a decrease or reduce. So the death of Charles Sumner in 1874 and the Panic of 1873 helped cause many in the Republican Party to begin to focus on other issues. And many Republicans began to call for a smaller government. Okay, let's jump to, let's finish up with key concept 5.3, Roman numeral 3. The constitutional changes the Reconstruction period embodied a northern idea of American identity and national purpose and led to conflicts over new definitions of citizenship, particularly regarding the rights of African Americans, women, and other minorities. Now, the 14th and 15th Amendments, definitely know these. These are specifically mentioned. They provided for citizenship, equal protection of the laws, and suffrage for African-American males. However, these rights were restricted. You see segregation, Jim Crow laws, the idea of separate facilities begin to develop. Violence, the KKK was used to intimidate African-Americans and tried to prevent them from voting. Supreme Court decisions chipped away at the equal protection laws. The civil rights cases stated that individuals and private businesses could discriminate against other individuals as long as it's not the government doing the discrimination, that's okay. And later on in 1896, we had the court case Plessy versus Ferguson, which stated that se segregated facilities were okay as long as they were equal. And we'll see that many times, if ever, they were not equal. Local political tactics as well chipped away at the 14th and 15th Amendments by requiring poll taxes, which were, pay, which were a payment in order to vote, literacy tests, which required individuals to pass a test of vote, and grandfather clauses, which exempted whites from literacy tests and poll taxes. Now, what was the impact of the 14th and 15th Amendments on the women's rights movement? Essentially, it divided the movement. On one side, we see Frederick Douglass and others that favored black suffrage prior to women's suffrage, and on the other side, we see people like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony who would not support it because they feared that women's suffrage would not be granted anytime soon. And there is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. So although the 13th through 15th Amendments were restricted in the short term, they later would be used to uphold civil rights. And we especially see this in the 1950s and 60s civil rights movement in the court case Brown versus the Board of Education. All right, let's finish up with some test tips for multiple choice and short answer questions. Be able to describe the reasons for the Union's victory in the Civil War. 
different ways that the South resisted Reconstruction Amendments, and how Reconstruction changed the relationship between Congress and the presidency. For essay question, being able to connect Reconstruction Amendments to civil right, to the Civil Rights Movement in the 1950s and 1960s, that will give you your synthesis point in the long essay, and be able to explain the political and social impacts of Reconstruction on American society, not just African Americans, but women as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. If you have not already, please subscribe to my channel. Help me spread the word. If you know anybody who would benefit from watching this video, please share it with them. I thank you guys very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you right back here for Key Concept 6.1. Best of luck this year and on your test MA. Have a good day.